this episode. It's almost too easy. I mean, anybody can come up and take this picture. All I want is a cuddle. I've got the shapes. I've got the colour. Just give me a bit of light, will you? My knob's bent. Has it got a kink in it? We are getting beautiful shots. This is the best light we've seen on this entire trip. It's better than Tom's. That's all that matters. That's a nasty thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at my award-winning pictures. You bought a my memory card or something. We've got it happening before our eyes. A bit pretentious, though, isn't it? What about your toilet? Where's the toilet? Oh, right, in there. Right, um, we're back at Quarry Pond. This time we're here with Grumpton. There's, uh, there's, Hello. there's my old Grumpatius. And uh, did you sleep well? Did you... I did not sleep well. Oh. Was it the sounds coming from the camper? It was. Sorry about that. So it was the beans. Oh, that was a bit of a rough night, actually. Yeah? Too much whiskey? No, it was just. Old. Old whiskey. No, I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> you can say old whiskey. So now I'll be really tired later on and I'll need a ma uh, an old man nap. Well, yeah. that's all right, mate, because I, I am fully with you with the naps. I, I, I like to get my shoot done and get up, have some breakfast. And then have a nap. Have a nap. Now, Brent doesn't understand this yet. He just wants to keep hiking all day, and I'm like, dude, it's nap time. How old's Brent? Uh, he's in his mid 30s, I think. Oh, well, he's got ways to go get. Yeah. He hasn't broken down like us. Plus, he's a personal trainer, so he's super fit. So, like, oh, all he thinks he is. Oh, well, he is fit. He is. He's like a machine. I've trained with him. He used to. He trained me for a while. I was a failure of a project. <laughs> 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 he didn't get his uh, portfolio piece out of me. That's for sure. <laughs> portfolio piece. <laughs> oh, it's getting pink. Ooh. Right, we better go. It's, it's time to shoot. Is that a liar there yeah, let's go. <laughs> Well, we managed to miss that first blush of colour, so I was somewhat annoyed with myself. We wasted valuable minutes nattering, not really thinking there was any chance, and now it's kicking off. But luckily, it's a 60 second hike, even in my appropriate footwear, and I'm almost there. I immediately set up the camera on the tripod and began furiously shooting, just in case this turned out to be the highlight of the day. So this is exactly the kind of light that I was hoping for. Not what we got last week when we first came, but everything is perfect. I've got beautiful light, I've got completely flat calm mirror pond, hopefully you can see that in this low light, and some textured clouds, absolutely. Fantastic. So I'll take this shot and then I'll explain this composition. So hopefully you can see, basically I'll just increase the exposure. So this foreground features a very obvious reflection, but I've got just enough of the beach in the foreground with these, these leaves that I'm hoping you can see here, these yellow leaves, just to give it that extra sort of third dimension to the composition. And that's it, it's actually dead simple. F8, super wide, what more do you need? Now because I was a bit rushed, I felt that the composition it could have been better. So I stuck around in the hopes of getting that second blush. It's great this spot because you get two shots. So you get this pre-sunrise glow, but then once it's way up and it's kind of, if it's clear, it gets about, I would say another hour, maybe an hour and a half, and it starts to creep in. It'll light up all, all, these all of these trees. Nice. And I, even though it's not as moody, there's a lot more going on when you get that. And I actually prefer that kind of light for this scene anyway. What do you think? Amazing. Bit of a brutal hike though, isn't it? Oh God. Yeah. What is it, 100 meters? Yeah, I'm, I actually got a little piece of gravel in my flip flops. Oh God. Yeah, it's... The things we do. Man. We, we it's suffer. It, it's, it's awful. Yeah. Oh. oh. <sighs> kind of in my way there, man. Can you move? I'm serious about it. Yeah. Oh. I 
After Grumpton's prolapse in the pants, I thought it wise to distance myself. This reminded me of the F4 road trip where we all had to suffer the disintegrating bowels of Thomas Heaton. So we're just uh, we're just sticking around waiting to see if this sun pops up through a gap and gives us a different kind of light. But I've just noticed in the distance, in the car park, a school bus just showed up. It could be just the bus driver having a break before he goes pick oh, up yeah, the kids. Yeah, let's hope that's what it is. If not, it's about to get real loud. I bet this would be a nice uh, ice skating pond in the winter. A yeah, little bit of rain. <laughs> bit of thunder. <laughs> right, after a short natter with Grumpatious. <laughs> just returning that. Oh, is, is there an echo? <laughs> We're now into the second blush, which I didn't think we were going to get. And I thought the best of the colour was over, but no. What time is it? It's 7.28. Yeah, I might have to change my composition because most of the light is over that side, but then it's just popping up there, so it happens so quick. This is pretty dull though. I mean, it's just a picture of a pond with a reflection. It needs... Uh, I mean, anybody can come up and take this picture. It is low-hanging fruit. It is very low. You never shoot low-hanging fruit, do you, Adam? How come you pick this spot? Because I like all of these yellow trees, yeah. which are reflected, and then I like this added layer of colour where you've got the leaves in the foreground, but of course you won't be seeing that with your uh, measly little 23 millimeter, will you? Yeah, no, it's just a mountain with the reflection. It's not very exciting. Yeah, what, what, what would make it exciting for you, uh, a, a tree branch? That would no, be my thing. You know, just something, um, give it a bit more depth. I yeah. tried those rocks, but they're a bit man-made. They're man-made, yeah. Even I won't touch those. Maybe like a moose or something? A bear? A moose or a bear would be great. I startled a grouse up at uh, Lake Louise last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Those are good eating. Yeah, well... But they're probably not, elite, not legal to kill in the national park. Well, I don't think you could kill any animals in the national park. I don't think. I think that's frowned upon. Even feeding them's frowned upon. So you can't kill them and you can't feed them. What can you do? All I want is a cuddle. So you were... Uh, you're going over there now, are you? Let's have a quick look, yeah. If you find anything good, you're gonna come back and let me know. Well, you'll probably just come back next year and copy me anyway. Well, I guess uh, it's not copying if you just do it better. You know what I mean? True. Um, well, if you, if you see anything good, just, just send us a text. All right, I'm just going 100 feet down here, so you want me to send yeah, you a text? it's too far for me to risk. So it's never an ideal situation when you arrive somewhere and the light immediately kicks off because you don't really have the luxury of time to refine your composition but because the second blush ended and we're now waiting for that third one i've now had quite a bit of time to find a much more pleasing composition i'm really happy with this i just need a bit of light but i'll show you this shot that i've framed up and i'll explain to you what i'm doing so hopefully you can see all this basically Har that's harling peak there and it's completely changed its position because before I was kind of shooting in this direction. Well now I've angled it round here to also take in the east end of Mount Rundle there. So a few years ago when I shot a very similar image, there wasn't anywhere near as many yellow poplars as there are in the centre of the frame there today. So I love that massive splash of colour right in the centre of the frame. So obviously you've got the mountain range which is reflected in Quarry Pond here but I love all of these leaves that just create this foreground and if I just really increase the uh, shutter speed brighten things up a lot here you should be able to see just on the left these quite I would say two foot tall grasses just creeping in from the left which also create a nice little curve and then on the bottom right here there's this but it's actually a small rock but in the frame it looks pretty big so all of those elements i think work quite well to frame up this lovely scene i just need a bit of light i've got the shapes i've got the color just give me a bit of light will you i think it'll come and if it does if the if the sun creeps in gets high enough doesn't get blocked what you'll see is you'll see these trees just completely light up they'll start to glow really hot and that'll make for a very dynamic shot. How did it go over there Grumpatious? Did you did you find a shot? It's almost but it's not quite. There's some nice there's some nice grasses there with the leaves floating in between them. Yeah. But there's there's all these twigs and stuff that are kind of in the way and I didn't feel right about 
ripping them out. Breaking them off, you know, it's kind of not the thing to do around here. You know. In this man-made pond. The Canadian Rockies, it's mostly sunrises. Most of the best shots are sunrise shots. <clears throat> and so for that, you need that clear gap in the east where the sun's rising. And it does look quite clear. So I'm, I'm somewhat hopeful that we're going to get this light. And I think probably uh, Banff, Canmore area probably get the best light for sure. Well, that's a bit flash. I think, I think my knob's bent. Well, look at me knob. My knob's bent. Has it got a kink in it? Yeah, look, it's got. It's not. It's kind of like wobbling. It's wonky. You got a wonky knob there. I do. But see this one. Can you see it? See how it's got a wobbly knob. Oh yeah, there's a right wobble on that. Oh. while since we had some shenanigans uh, you didn't you didn't invite me up on your last couple of adventures there I noticed it's all that about oh up to uh, 50 40 and yeah, whatever well would you have gone no because <laughs> <laughs> you were just up there yeah but you know it's nice to get an invite though isn't it? well I just wanted to, I just wanted to go do something on my own you know I was supposed to go on a trip with Jeremy and poor guy hurt his arm get well soon Jeremy yeah yeah so I was a bit disappointed about not going on the trip yeah, because that was going to be the big trip of the year. Well, I could I could have cheered you up though. You know? Well, you, we well, you could have. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you just want to, you know, go on your own. Yeah, so I went up to fifty forty, and it was good. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's trying to make me feel bad. I think we're going to get a little bit of light, so we're going to see just a little bit of contrast and texture happening over there. The trees are getting brighter, but that's just soft light that's reflected. But as soon as that sun just clears that cloud, I think we're gonna get something quite magnifique, actually. It was good to catch up with Methuselah, even though he was just taking pictures of grass. And with regard to my prediction of stunning light, well, you can just call me the Oracle. Well, they say patience is a virtue, and uh, it seems with old age, I'm learning that virtue. Look at this business, just absolutely fantastic. Just kicking off. Oh, those guys who left earlier, they must be kicking themselves now because we are getting beautiful shots. So I will be happy to just take this as it is. If I don't get any light on those trees, that's okay. But if I can get this plus a bit of light on those trees, <laughs> but I reckon that's about another 20, 30 minutes off, in which case, then the light on the mountain won't be quite as pretty, but oh. anyway, I'll have to stop waffling and just concentrate on this shot because doing, trying to shoot this and natter to you is uh, counterproductive. So I'll see you in a bit. Every second, the light just got better and better. And when it comes to landscape photography, this is about as easy as it gets. We've got zero wind on the pond, except for Grumpton's angry shards, perfect fall colors, and just the right amount of cloud cover exactly where we wanted it. This is the best light we've seen on this entire trip. And it's happened on a day when we've decided to come to a man-made pond. <laughs> Instead of, uh, you know, Lake O'Hara and these majestic mountains, it's, it's right here in the low-hanging fruit of Canmore. But who cares? When, when you get beautiful mountains with beautiful light, who cares if it's uh, a man-made pond? It's absolutely stunning. And uh, there's so many gorgeous shots on offer right now. I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know whether to camp out on this shot and keep shooting or get the other camera and put a telephoto. And I mean, look at these trees over here on the other side of the lake. Like if I got the telephoto and just pointed it at those, I've got some nice reflexio and that's a shot or even that one, you know, or, or just this section here. There's just so much to shoot. But when you've got a, a shot that's really good and it's working, you don't want to leave it. I feel like a bit of a kid in a candy store. Like all my Christmases came at once. 
Well, I choose caramel. Now, if you're a meteorologist, you'll you'll be able to give me a reason for why this happens. But uh, one thing I have learned over the years that landscape photography has taught me is that when you are shooting and the sun is slowly rising, once it pops up and it is now hitting everything in the scene, that is when always the wind picks up. That's when your reflections start to disappear. And now that's exactly what's happening. This, uh, this pond is starting to get a little bit of a, a rough surface on it. So I don't know why that happens. All I know is that it does. So if you do know why that happens and you're an expert in these things, please post a comment and let me know because I'm curious as to why it always happens. I just love th this type of light where if you look in the background, hopefully you can see it. It's these really sort of dark blue storm clouds. So it's bad, bad weather over there. But over here, we're in a pocket of nice weather where we've got lots of sun. And I love that contrast between the two where you've got brightly lit subjects against a doom laden sky way off in the distance absolutely fantastic kind of thing that you see in scotland quite a lot but obviously you'll see it here in the mountains that's just oh man i can't i can't stop shooting this is this is tremendous i would say what do you think grumpton my osmo has decided to update what are you photographing now just the peak or are you going for that over there i'm doing this this ensemble over here why don't you just do what you normally do and just uh Copy you. Copy my shot. Well, I'm waiting for you to move. <laughs> well, just come and get right next to me. Are you glad you came to meet us in Canmore now, Grumpton? I am. I think this was probably the best place to come because it looks pretty miserable down there. That's not what you were saying an hour ago. There was a lot of complaining. Well, I like to complain. Well, we are British. We do it well. Precisely. Well, is that why you do it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the British sport. Oh. Did you not know? No, I just thought you were miserable. <laughs> Well, that as well. Well, that too. <laughs> so I just look at what is going on in this scene here. This, this light is just, it's fantastic. It really is. We've got greys, we've got yellows, we've got blues, tons and tons of contrast, tons of texture, lots of pyrotechnics and dynamics. It's, it's everything that I dream about when, I, when I'm gonna go out on a shoot and we've got it happening before our eyes. Fantastic. How would you, how would you describe this kind of light, love? Magentic. It is magentic. That's my favourite new word. It's not new. It's not new. I've never heard it before. It's been in my vocabulary my whole life. No, it's definitely a real word. It's a, it's a good, well it's real now. It's good, I like it. Magentic. Well, this is the second morning in a row that I've had absolutely perfect conditions and I feel very lucky because it doesn't usually go this way, you know? If you've seen enough of my videos, you'll know that uh, I fail quite a lot. Actually, most of the time I get filler, so it's not a total failure. But I don't often get spectacular conditions like this, so I'm feeling very, very lucky and happy today. This, this is all my Christmases and birthdays come at once, I reckon. You know, it's times like this when I feel so fulfilled and enriched in my life that I often turn to this amazing book called Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle. 
Oh god, that's getting a bit ratty, isn't it? We better pull the cling film off that. When I get light like this, and I know that during my chase of awe, I'm going to get a fantastic shot. The one thing that I like to do to ensure that this is the shot is just hit the shutter with a copy of Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle. Just like, just yeah, hit the shutter and then that's the shot. There's a link in the description. Uh, th this light is, is so good and we've had so much of it. I'm actually sick of it now. No, don't I'm say that. Now. No, it's, I'm bored of it. Let's go home. That's enough. <laughs> I think it's quitting time. Quit on a high note. I oh, know, I can't, I can't stop shooting. I've got to keep going. I've got to, I've just got to keep shooting. <sighs> oh. Oh. oh, I've gone dizzy. You know, you know what makes this special? Is we're the only people here. There's nobody here but us. And I can guarantee you, well, maybe not guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that with the light that we've got and these beautiful mountains, we have probably got a far better shot today than any of the 1,200 people currently standing on the rock pile at Moraine Lake and jockeying for position to get a shot. Got it all to ourselves. That's really cruel, Gavin. Does that, does that make you feel good? That's really quite... That's a nasty thing to say. Only an ingrate would take that opinion <laughs> when really the point that I'm making is rather than follow the herd and do what everybody else is doing go for something that's a bit lesser known and perhaps enjoy all of the place to yourself I'm doing it for the gram man well the light continues to be spectacular the problem that I'm facing now is because the Sun has risen to such a height it's now casting huge shadows into the pond and that's okay for things like tree shadows or even the grasses but when it's my shadow and the tripod's shadow that doesn't look so great so I might have to completely now change my composition so that I'm more at an angle point in this way and I'm not constantly chasing my own shadow or fighting my own shadow oh or maybe the light's done should we pack up our bags Grumpton yeah time for breakfast eh yeah put our cameras in our camera bags and uh, head off for a brekkie what have you got for breakfast? Oh, do you like all bran? I had a whole bowl of no, all bran. No, you're not supposed to eat a whole bloody bowl. It was disgusting. Oh my God, it was like sawdust. It, it was. <laughs> I, would, I would rather have sawdust. No, you're just supposed to put a little bit in your regular cereal. Oh, it's just a topping. Yeah. Right. Kind of like a seasoning. Would you like the box? If you don't want it. I yeah. do not want it. Well, it's good to keep the hemorrhoids away. So, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. I do like to be regular. I'm just looking at my award-winning pictures. You bought a buy memory card or something. Right, should we pack up then? I couldn't resist one little prank on Grumpton. What's that? Oh, wow. I like to keep a copy in here for inspiration. Yeah. yeah. I could see that that would come in quite useful. Do you have um, a picture from here in here? No, that didn't make it in. But I think today's might just make it into the next book. Oh. It so might. There's going to be another one, is there? Well, of course. I mean, when you're an artist of my calibre... I didn't know you went up to the Bristol Cones. When I, was that? I thought you'd read this book, Adam. I thought you'd at least skim through it. Well, I don't remember seeing that shot. Oh, what are these? Meteors? No, it's a, it's a Star Trails shot. Oh. It's that, those are Star Trails, so it's a, that's a three-hour time-lapse. Oh, well, what's, what are these things? These big Those are like some starbursts of the, of the stars. Oh. Quite manipulated, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I know that all of your shots are straight out of camera, aren't they? Oh, it's it's wet. Well, it's, it looks like a it looks like a stain that you'd have on your underwear. Like that's a, the same book that we had in Paysant Creek. That remember? looks like a bum crack sweat thing. <laughs> 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 Don't you remember that that Paysant Creek video we did, and I pulled it out of the creek? Oh, that, oh, okay. That's that same book. Oh, well, it's done yeah. pretty good, eh? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, if you think about it, it's that's some good shrink wrap. A bit pretentious, though, isn't it? It was time to get back on the road and relocate to a new campground where Grumpalicious demonstrates his chef skills and gives us a campervan tour. Look who's here. 
Oh, hello. So yeah, it's uh, it's coming. It's it coming along. Good. It's almost. Yeah. Sweet. Got a lot of like, got running water. Look at this. Whoa. Wow. What do, you, what do you fill that up with? It's a it's a tank. It's got a pump on it. Oh. You have to. You have to do it do manually. You, do you want to <laughs> How often do you have to pump it? Well, you just keep pumping it. Oh, I like it. You just never stop. Yeah. Oh, wow, a swivel. You use that for me uh, computer. Whoa. This will be boxed in, and then there'll be cupboards up here, but I haven't got that far. It slides out. Oh, wow. And then I've got my propane. And then I've got a long hose on it, so I can put my stove on the, on the picnic table. How long's your hose? Rather personal question oh i see so yeah you just stretch it so that's why you want it to back up so close yeah i get it and then i'll, I'll probably put a drawer in here so we can put plates and utensils mm. but i've got to get the van jacked up like yours because there's a lot of weight and it's starting to sag at the back so when you designed all this <clears throat> did you design it around the camera bag depth of course <laughs> <laughs> it just happened to fit and there'll be a cubby hole here I'll put all my food in here have you got a jackery for your power yeah jackery works pretty good are you going to get solar panels up uh, I might put one on there yeah just so it's charged because I'm, I'm running low on power with, with roof solar panels when you're driving it's just charging yeah, the time it's, right? it's, we, never, we never run dry but you, have, but you have a battery right yeah, we've got two deep cycle batteries. The important thing is that when you finish this, it's better than Tom's. That's all that matters. Well, it is really, isn't it? I mean, that's the only reason I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it has nothing to do with functionality or it's just so it looks better than Tom's. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> to be fair, you, you know, you were the first with the Delicas. I was, I was. I think Tom copied me, actually. I think he copied you. Same with the, the, the Fuji cameras, you know. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was this time last year that Fuji lent me a camera to come here. They didn't give you a camera. Well, they give you one. Well, they think they're lending me one, <laughs> but they're actually giving me one. <laughs> as far as they're concerned. Well, so I've, just, I've devised this really cheeky method of making sure I get to keep it. And in my videos, I'm just going to basically say to the audience, don't you think I've done a good job of promoting this camera? I think that I should get to keep it. What do you think? And then they'll post in the comments, I'm hoping, unless they think I don't deserve it. But hopefully they'll, there'll be such peer pressure on Fujifilm that they'll just let me keep it. You don't think that'll work? Canon, get in touch. Are you impressed by Uncle Grumpy's rig? Yeah, I really like it. It's, it's good. coming. Yeah. Do you think we should downsize? Does that pull out to a bigger bed or is, do you sleep on a couch? Well, it, it's tight. So it's a bit of a hassle, but it's not it's not terrible. Oh, I had the tables made by a guy in Coombs. Nice. It he, he did the, the wood for me. Yeah, it looks like maple. I had I had these three pieces cost me a hundred bucks. Nice. So is there quite a lot of faffing about like to switch modes between sleeping mode and then no no not really the table this table is a bit of a, a fact um but no it's it's easy so all you have to do is just push push these levers down okay. and the whole thing just slides forward oh. like that and then just put that down and then so would that would that do you think that would hold my weight uh absolutely not gavin you would have to have it reinforced somehow. What about your toilet? Where's the toilet? Oh, right, I meant. Oh, you're. Uh... And I use a spoon just to. <laughs> <laughs> Shit flicker. Well, thanks for the tour, mate. That's uh, it's a nice rig, actually. Come together. I think I'm most impressed by your uh, your sewing. I didn't know that you had those chops. Yeah, you, know, you think you know somebody and then they surprise you with some Ooh, skills. We've got a task for him for our back door. No, I'm not doing sorry for the people. I feel like I've got zips in there. Zips in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sew that as well? Yeah, I sewed all of them. Damn! Well, wow. when Tom said he paid 800 pounds for his, for his sewing, I thought I'd make my own. You'd just go that extra. Yeah. Well, yeah. they look great. It's quite comfy in here, you know, you can fit four people in here just sitting around. You, you know? could do a workshop in your van. <laughs> kind of, kind of slideshow. Yeah. <laughs> That's socially distanced, of course. Of course. And we're just discussing where we're going to go next. 
And the general consensus is? Riding on stone. Riding on stone, Provincial Park. And uh, the big draw there is these cool rock formations and hoodoos. And the way this nice snake, what's the name of the river? Milk River. Milk River. Kind of snakes through the valley there. So there's potential. I think it's a nice place to camp too. Yeah, there's, apparently there's a nice campground. Uh, but it's also a really good place to test out the Fuji GFX 100S at doing astrophotography because I think it might be a bit of a challenge. Have you ever done any astro with yours? No. He hates astrophotography. Well, they don't really have any fast wide lenses. No. It's the widest lens and it's what, f4? So. But it, that's okay actually because sometimes I like shooting at f4 for astro. Why, why do you think it would struggle? Because of the shallow depth of field. Oh. So if I'm any, if I'm even anywhere near a foreground, let's say some cool rock formations, and then you have some Milky Way behind that, you're gonna have to focus stack, and it's not not terribly difficult, but it is a bit of a pain in the ass to focus stacking in the dark. So you have to use artificial light to be able to focus on, you know, your foreground objects rather than natural light. But it's doable. So we'll see. We'll compare, maybe do a comparison between Fuji and the Sony and see which one does better Astro. I think I know which one it's going to be. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see how it compares. And it's a new location. Are you excited about the desert, love? Are you excited about going somewhere warm and sunny? I am, actually. Yeah. Can't wait. Might not be that warm. It's near oh. Saskatchewan. Oh, really? Is Saskatchewan cold? Mm-hmm. Very. What's your belly? Oh. You can't just drop and leave. <laughs> Take it with you. He's blocking our oh. egress. Oh. And uh, mm -hmm. he's just, he just drops a, a stinker. Oh, don't do that. It's wafting back in. You... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, look, he's still doing it. I kind of like it. <laughs> oh, that, that's weird. I'm just kidding. She doesn't. It's the broccoli dance. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw a little bit of moonwalk in that as well. That was really good. Grumpton's got moves, you know. Yeah. I don't know how to do moonwalk. Can I, can I be taught? <laughs> I, I don't think you can be taught. That's magic, that is. Now, if you've ever wanted to cook your own grump chowder, this is how it's done. Marinade. <laughs> bit of Deanston's, just, you know. Those are big chunks you're gonna throw in there. Spices. So Chef Gibbs is going to just show us how he puts it all together. Secret spices. Secret spices. <laughs> a, bit a bit of moth for the secret ingredient. Look at this. Ooh, that looks. That looks, uh, looks sodium. Well, this one. No, no, it's chili. They're chili peppers. Is that chili peppers? Well, those are those are your vegetables, but we've already got veggies. Those are your greens. Just well, you got your your broccoli, your greens, right? Oh, well, that smells so this good. smells good, actually. <laughs> They're al dente. I like them al dente. I like them. I don't al like dente. mushy. No. Save room for dessert. What's for dessert? My specialty, flake dogs. Sounds different. Oh, it's, it's different. Gavin just loves them. Delicious. Grumpatious aggressively devoured his bowl of grump chowder. Oh, you, you managed to polish all that off. I guess you, you probably don't want a dessert then, do you? No, not tonight. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's full, love. It's not, maybe tomorrow though, eh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, oh, yeah, tomorrow. Gavin just loves them. They're brilliant, yeah. Can't wait to shove it <laughs> <laughs> I say we get to bed, eh? No, I mean, not all not together. <laughs> That'd be weird. Um, it's been a while since we did that. A couple of years, maybe. Um. <laughs> <laughs>